what technologies do you think people are kind of sleeping on right now that will potentially change the world in the next five, 10 years? I don't know if they're sleeping on them, but I, I think people are hesitant with AI. Back to the first part of our conversation, like I, I think people are hesitant because they're afraid of it replacing their work or or um, what they're trying to build. And I, I think that mindset is is going to end up doing that, in fact. And if it, if it, again, if you instead see it as a as a foundation that we can stand on, and that it's something that enables you to do even more with less, and it gives you time back, um, then it's a tool like anything else. And and I, I think that's I think that's the scary thing right now. And and I think people are letting the fear um, keep them from experimenting with it and keep them from just trying it and and having more of a closed mind so i think it's really important with any new technology to try it for yourself don't trust what you read from others don't trust other opinions on it form your own opinion on your experience and you have to dive into it and trust yourself to learn from that experience it might be challenging it might be frustrating well, who cares? You're going to learn no matter what. And you could, you'll build that learning into, into something else that will be useful for yourself, for your business. There's a, there's a mantra within the Bitcoin circles, which is don't trust verify. And what that really means is like, let your experience be the guide of everything. Make your own decisions, form your own opinions, because you're going to get thousands of other ones from other people. But the one true one is what you, what resonates with you after you experience it yourself. And, and these tools are available to you and, and, you know, you'll be able to understand like if, if they actually enable you or how they diminish you in any way and you can overcome that. It, it's a decision. Jack, you, you've been an advocate, obviously for Bitcoin, but you've talked around this topic of decentralization. And over the past 10 years, we've seen more institutions come into the space more and more. I wonder, you know, a few years ago, Web3 was the big talk. What are your thoughts on decentralization now and how far away are we or how soon will we see it come to fruition from your early talks? Well, first, like with any of these technologies like Web3, AI, Bitcoin, like all, all these things that we're talking about, Web2, like whatever it was in the past, there's always going to be this like massive hype cycle. And it's going to be easy to get into that sec in, into that hype without really understanding the fundamentals. So again, this goes back to like touching ground and experiencing yourself. Does this actually bring value to you or is someone trying to sell you something that's just repackaged with the same thing? And I saw a lot of web three ultimately as a repackaging of the same thing. And what I mean by that is like I saw a lot of VCs who are using it as a way to rebrand something that already existed or was still somewhat centralized and wasn't really solving the problem. And it, it was just, it was just frustrating to see, but I realize that's with every techno technology, every new technology that really comes up always has a hype cycle. So it's really up to you all and, and, and to us to like understand, like, again, does this actually give me time back? Does this actually add value to what I'm doing? Does it add value to my customers or not? And if it doesn't, it's okay to ignore it because it'll go away or it'll settle into something that, that does. Um, I would say that the early internet, for those of you who were on it, it was amazing. It was like, you know, this wild, wild west of like frontier of like everything was new. And everything was decentralized. There was Usenet, there was IRC, there was Gopher, there was a web. There were no centralizing forces. And then all of that disappeared in like five years because of a few companies um, building something that was convenient to people, which was like, how do I find things on the internet? And you had Alta Vista and you had uh, Deja News and you had Google and you had Facebook and you had Twitter, these centralized the discovery mechanism of the internet. So you went to one place to find all this incredible content, but the problem was the content lived on those services as well. So you had the discovery and the creation 
and also the API, all owned by one company. And that to me is, is wrong. It's wrong for the company because it puts a ton of pressure on them. And it's wrong for the customer because the, the company actually owns your data. Um, and they own your identity. And you've all experienced this if you're trying to move your data to another thing or you have to re-sign up or whatnot. That's not how things should exist. So now we have fin we finally have technology to enable data portability and moving your identity around with it without a company owning it. But it's not accessible right now. It's not well designed, but it's just work. And it's a, it's an opportunity for some businesses as well. For those of you who are still looking for some opportunities. Um, it's a way to, you know, it, it's something that, that needs to be figured out more. So I'd say we're still pretty early with it, but at the same time, there's never been more energy around it. And the thing that worries me the most is the most centralized of these um, services that we become more dependent upon is AI. We have five or six companies that are building very centralized services that are uh, you go to, you sign up to, you pay for. And the CEOs of these companies can change the intelligences. They can change the algorithms. They can literally decide based on a question you have how it's going to answer. And you've seen this play out, obviously, in the press. Um, thankfully, we have open source models. And thankfully, we have people who are pushing that more and more. And like we have, again, a third horse in the race, which is completely open and owned by the people. But we need to desire it, we need to want it, and we need to ultimately use it to not become dependent upon five companies or, or just one company for, for this really important technology, which is effectively intelligence. We've seen it with social media, we've seen it with intelligence, we've seen it with... Uh, um, with a number of other things on the internet <clears throat> discovery now we need to make sure that like all these things can be open source and they can be decentralized and and really usable by any business